Just be the one to call Tech Nine. What's up? It's your boy Mac 10. What up, y'all? This crazy bone from Bone Thugs. What's up? This is B Real from Cypress Hill. Hey, yo, this is Method Man. It's your boy. Back in the house for another Road to Hollywood. Thank you so much for tuning in. We got a great show tonight. It's going to be action packed. 
we got special guests in the studio. We got some exclusive interviews backstage at some of the hottest events of the year. And of course, we're winding down, coming right up on IES. So a lot of information tonight. Again, thanks for tuning in. Without further ado, I want to introduce my guest. We can't get enough of him. We had him on a radio show, back for TV, because you got to see the visual. This is Big A. It's DPG Records in the house. In the building all day, West Coast Compton OG representing Indie Game. Well, give us, let, let's get right into it. Like I say, I know you were saying that, you know, you grew up, you, you knew Eric Wright, people like that. That whole neighborhood became so fertile yeah. of what we talked about with Ice Cube and Dr. Yeah. Dre yeah. and, of course, you know, so much that came out around that. And now even to this day, we got the Kendrick Lamars and the people in the general yeah. Compton area keeping that right. alive. Right. Uh, talk about a little bit about those, those early days, you know. I, I know you told the story again, you know, going into the military and all that, mm-hmm. but give us a little synopsis. Of, of of growing up and then reuniting with these guys and watching what it became. Growing up, growing up in the hood of Compton, you know that's that's a that's a given. You know what that is? It's all you know the the drug deals, the gang bang. So just growing up within that community, like I was saying, we were always saying that um, you know Compton was L.A. You know until you know until straight out of Compton hit and we mm-hmm. recognized that we were a little different. Um, we have our own. Uh, uh, Gambling Casino, Crystal Park. We got a, mm. our own little airport. So we kind of looked up to ourselves, you mm. know what I mean? Not a, not a lot of big cities got that. But in the essence of uh, the business, uh, once we got that fire lit under us, because, you know, it's in a community like that is reach one, teach one. If you see the homies on the corner doing their transaction, then mm-hmm. that's the only thing you see, then that's what you do. So mm-hmm. Eric took it from that, came from that, took it to that, and turned it into a business. Yeah. And once he brought in the entertainment business, and as you know, when Compton hit, you had MCA, King T, Toddy T, Mix Master Space, DJ Quick, Second to None, AMG, Player Hammer, and the Penthouse Players. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Mm-hmm. And I and MCA, and I still have a relationship with those pioneers in the game. But once that door opened up, it opened up a floodgate of uh, of uh, jobs and entertainment executives. And that's yeah. where I took it. I took it to the executive level. Well, that's great. I, I know, again, you know, being in the military and you saw that happening, I know you couldn't wait to get back and, and get in there. And, of course, the military, I'm sure, gave you some of that, that you know, discipline, that direction Absolutely. to take – to take this raw street energy Absolutely. and actually turn it into a thing. Because as we both know, it's a serious hustle to be in the music entertainment business. Yeah. And what I say yeah. by that is you got to love what you do, yep. and the grind has got to be constant. It's yeah. not like – you know, oh boy, we got to go to work, man. It's twenty four seven. Right, right. You love what you do, right? Whether you're making the music, presenting it, pitching it, shooting a video, a photo, coming up with a lyrical or, or an album cover idea, or an ad or a flyer. You know, it's just a, it's an everyday thing. So I know when you reconnected. You know, when you told me, you know, you figured out that N.W.A. and Eric Wright was the infamous Easy E. Yeah. <laughs> you know, talk about coming home and and seeing that. You know, that not only the ruthless empire. You know, yeah. but also what Priority Records did. You know, yeah. they were lucky enough to grab that lightning in a bottle and have that NWA straight out of Compton yeah. album. Yeah. Easy yeah. does it. Yeah, and and then when Cube decided to form his own uh-huh. lane, uh-huh. That, that that just expanded the the pipeline. It expanded the pipeline. So, so t- talk about those days and and re- really seeing you know that foundation come together. Well, just admiring, you know, looking up to Eric and. That business, like I said, we all come from the grassroots. We don't know, we didn't know how to, you know, package up. You know what I mean? So when he got into the entertainment business, that means he learned from the bottom up. So it ain't like he expounded information. So we all learned from the bottom up. Meaning, by me going to the military, I learned protocol, respect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I led conversation, uh, hierarchy. All yeah, that. I learned all of that. So. I took all of the respect and communicating skills that I got uh, traveling the world. Um, I brought that back and said, okay, Eric is doing it. So I had to take what he left us was a small blueprint of the business. Now, you know, uh, at that time, the independent retail game was huge. Huge, sure. mom and pop record Fortune shops records all over. And the VIPs, yes, and up and down yes, and yes. King yes. Of music and, and yes. so much. Yes, on the yes, streets. yes. And that was the difference between the independent uh, coalition retailers mm-hmm. uh, and individual operated and owned. You know, Royce Fortune was not involved in all that. He had something, but he bagged about it all that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I learned from Eric's moving and listening to Violet Brown, who was very influential in giving me information about the corporate structure of independent mm -hmm. uh, from a corporate structure record label. Treat right. your independent record label or your record like a corporate structure. Okay, mm -hmm. meaning distribution, manufacturing, uh, getting to a distributor to get it to Warehouse Records. So what I did, I bagged up all the way and went back to day one what Eric would do. He would get all his music, press, had it pressed up at McCullough, mm -hmm. which he had to learn that game. He learned the hard way. Right. He was paying for press up and it was going out the back door. Mm -hmm. So we know about all that. So by I'm like, how's it going out the back door? Well, they were selling it because he didn't know about all the connections around the world. Um, <laughs> right, right. You gotta walk through the fire to get to you the You gotta walk through the fire. Yeah. So by the time we got to that level, we knew all about that. You know, I didn't press up records at Rainbow Records. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't use Rainbow because Rainbow Records, everybody was using it. And with relationships with the with the underground independent market, you had people that had relationships with Rainbow Records that could go there, slide that little underground cheese, see some vinyl. Who was that? Oh, man, let me buy all those, pay for all that, take it out, ship it to Japan or whatever to ship it to, and that guy who gave it to him out the warehouse would press up the order again so mm -hmm. you know you know that yeah, you game gotta, you gotta plug up the hole you gotta plug you up know? the hole so it was you know when the manufacturing game came out like I said I'm gonna go back to what I was saying I took it back to the old school um, as when me and dad's got together press up the record yourself mm -hmm. I got that from Eric because mm -hmm. he told me before I got the record shop at the uh, at the um, uh, Real Com City Use video mm -hmm. he said Orrin he was telling me that he was the second leading entertainer to get, um, he was getting 68 cents. He said, I'm one of the highest paid entertainers in the business. I said, what you mean? He said, I'm getting 68 cents a record from Priority Records. I'm like, 68 cents? He said, Michael Jackson's getting like a dollar, dollar ten. He's the highest paid when it comes to units. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, if we're buying records for $13.99, $9.99, you know, how does that break down? He said, well, first of all, in order to get seven, eight bucks, you have to have the talent, make the talent hot and more than demand, manufacture the talent, and distribute the talent and ship the talent. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what? He said, Man get the talent, manufacture it, package it, and ship it yourself. I'm like, wow. So when he told me that, you know, I took that in, in, in hand. So we started manufacturing it ourselves and taking it back to what he did with the Rodeo Swap Meeting and Violet Brown, taking it directly to the retailer, eliminating the one stops. But you can only do so much. If you're from LA, all you're gonna do is go around within the LA circle. When yeah. you got Florida, Texas, mm -hmm. you know, so Chicago, how do you get it to those? York, yeah. How do you get it to those? Well, there was independent one stop wholesalers. Mm -hmm. Abbey Road, what was the Lemur Park, uh, that independent wholesaler right. out there, yeah. Super D. I mean, there was independent wholesalers that would give you a vendor agreement. Uh, Cisco's that was handling stuff mm -hmm. that was in the 818, Japan. Mm -hmm. So once we learned that game, uh, it was an open book. Yeah. It was an open book. We was given independent artists, individual distribution deals ourselves. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. a really exciting time. And again, this year at IES, we're going to be honoring NWA and really bringing together so many people from that origin of Priority and Ruthless Absolutely. and Straight Outta Compton and Audio Achievements, the studio where all those records were made with Dre and Yella and, of course, Easy and all the side projects. So much talent came out of that. It's going to be a great celebration. Our special guest tonight is Big A, DPG Records, so much history. We're going to come right back with some more of the Road to Hollywood. Right now, we're going to go backstage, on stage, Dog Pound. This is Crush Groove. More on the Road to Hollywood coming right up.
the way the first time you heard K Day and you know the first hip hop that made you want to do this? Uh, Easy NWA, Ice Cube, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. In the building, you understand the me? Early days, man. Let's talk about the first days you heard K Day and want to do this yourself, man. What was it like? Well, you know, I was a kid, man. You understand me, man? And K Day was our, our our only ear to the streets of music. You know what I'm saying? When it came right, to hip hop, yes, sir. You understand me? So K Day, K Day is the key to the game when it comes to the West Coast and hip hop. You understand me? But nobody was playing hip hop. K Day was. Now, now, what's it? What's it like? How does it feel to be part of that legacy? You know, from NWA and that family and tree, Warren and everybody. The family tree, man. How's that feel? I mean, it feels good. You know what I mean? We've been in this game for quite some time, and we still here. So you know. And, uh, you know, even when it comes to Daz, you know, Daz been involved with hip-hop so much. He was a DJ before. He popped locked when they was doing the, you know, when breakdancing was cracking. We both was a part of breakdancing. So we've been in hip-hop for a mighty long time. But when we made it in the game, it became real big. So be a part of something we grew up to, like K-Day, it's a great achievement for us. Yeah. Now, how does it feel to pay tribute to Nate, everybody tonight? Oh, yeah, we do that every time we perform. You know what I'm saying? So we give it our all just like it's our last. You know what I'm saying? So we give it to the fans 100,000% for Nate Dogg, us, and everybody else that represented hip-hop. Now, how important it is to keep that West Coast legacy going and keep it growing? It's forever, man. Like I said, the music is here forever, man. It's never going nowhere, man. So make a statement, and it'll be here. So what advice would you give to that young artist coming up today? What do they got to focus on to have their own legacy? Uh, focus on your business. Get life in order. Make sure that you're okay and finish school and do everything that you're supposed to do. You know right from wrong. You can feel it in your gut. You did? What you for advice to the young artist? I mean, perfect your craft. That's the number one thing is perfect your craft. Get your craft together. Um, get your business in order. Make sure your business is right. And like Dad said, make sure that you, uh, you know, as a, as a person, that you're right. You know what I mean? Make sure that your life is right, man. Uh, that's really all you got to do. But mainly perfect that craft, man. Get that craft together. You understand me? I mean, this is music. We make all kinds of music, you know what I mean? So, and don't be one-sided with your music. It's like I was telling my nephew, you know what I'm saying? He's an upcoming artist from the West Coast. You understand me? UEB, uh, UEP, he's up in the building, you understand me? And, um, you know, the main thing I teach him is to be open with your music, man. Make, you know, different kinds of music because there's all kinds of people that listen to music and music is about, you understand me, stretching your wings, man. And not just about being stuck in one one uh, box, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, that's really what it's mainly about. Okay, back to the road to Hollywood. Thank you so much for tuning in. That is Dog Pound. Man, what a show that was. I mean, Beautiful Warren show. G, Bone Thugs in Harmony. I mean, Exhibit was out there. Compton's Most Wanted. Too Short. Um, who else? It was Mac Ten. Oh my gosh! The list Last goes on. Own, yeah, know. MC Eight. I mean, you know, we're just talking about the legacy of not just the West Coast, but really independent music, and that's what we celebrate. You know, on this show, of course, with IES, the Indie Entertainment Summit coming up, and of course, Indie Power twenty four seven. It's all about you know really being a student of the game, and that's what I love. It's like. You know, if you're going to be a great chess player, yeah. what do you do? You play a lot of chess. Absolutely. You, you absorb from the masters. Absolutely. And you apply yourself every day. And just like sports, you know, we just had the SBs come through in town and all the athletes, all of them, I always ask everybody I interview, you know, what advice you give to people coming up. And, you know, staying hungry and humble is across the board because once you, you know, coast a little bit, there's always time for a little relaxation. Don't get me Absolutely. wrong. Absolutely. You know, once you start coasting on your laurels, Man, there's going to be somebody right behind Absolutely. you. Biting, Absolutely. Biting on your heels. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, again, our guest this week is Big A. He is running DPG, uh, the record label. Let's talk about some of the new releases because, you know, mm. we, 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 of course, we're going to be talking about the hip-hop honors coming up. Yeah. We're going to be talking about the legacy of N.W.A. Mm -hmm. and Eazy-E and yeah. Tupac and Nate Dogg and, right. you know, Bone and, and DJ Quick and everything. But let's talk about what's going on today. You were just telling me that, you know, Daz is out there dropping some kind of compilation or album or yeah. the video every yeah. other month. Yeah. Talk about that independent hustle again, how you guys kind of learned it and through the help of the Violet Browns and all that. Yeah. How, how the opportunities are right now to control your own destiny. The opportunities is wide open. It's just that artists, when I give advice to artists, 
it's in this business. You have some, uh, I remember our attorney when we did the Banging on Wax um, project with Ronnie Ron, and we had to go through a legal battle with him and the structure of his administration. And we went to an attorney with no money. And our attorney was, uh, shout out to Henry Roots, he's out of Santa Monica. He took us under his wing, told us that if we live on the principles of a contract and you want to live on the principles and stay stuck on the principles, you're going to stay stuck right here. So what he said, he said, guys, look, let's move forward. I'm not in this for the long, for the short haul, I'm in it for the long haul. So in this business, you have to, I tell every artist to, in the entertainment business, if that's what you want to do, if you chose to do it. Now, you can have an eight-hour job to make sure your bills are paid. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with that. But in this business, you have to eat it, sleep it, walk it, talk it, live it. Yeah. Get the lingo. Uh, n know you, who yeah. you are, if your name pop up, or, or make sure you, that the artist don't step on your toe. So if a record label want to deal with you and he asked you, hey, Jay, you ever heard of this kid from the block? Oh, he's a good dude. I like his music. He came to the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because it's about building bridges, you know, building relationships. It's you know? about building so, bridges. So many people come in and, and are chasing the fame and it's fleeting mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and it's about to bling mm -hmm. and, and, you know, mm -hmm. smoke and mirrors. You yeah, know? absolutely. And, and, and when the smoke dies down, what do you got? You only have your expertise, your connections, yeah. and your perseverance. Yeah, absolutely. And that's and, really what you And got. to get back to what you were saying is it's about content. Uh, it's about catalog. And it's about building your independent label. Uh, I know one thing that uh, that I've learned working with Daz and you know other independent artists that's from the Bay Area, they understand the concept of catalog. See, and that's the thing. If you're an artist, you know a lot of these artists that's coming up right now is um, they see and they want to pretend they know, which you know some of them don't know what a one sheet is. Uh, I see a lot of artists that put out mixtapes. And they put out a mixtape because they think it's the mixtape game. Yeah, that's fine to build a fan base and to get some underground music out there. But, um, you know, they don't know how to garner a barcode. Right. Don't know how to register with the United States government. Yeah, or to, 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 They don't know how to get that. You know, and all this stuff is free. They don't know how to go online and get a tax ID number, incorporate themselves. You know what I mean? Or even go down to the county clerk's office and get a seller's permit so you can buy wholesale and sell retail. You know what I mean? So there's some structure in the business. But my thing is with Daz and with other artists that I have worked with in the business, I always drive on them. Drop this compilation. Drop a solo project. Grab this group. Put them out. That's three records you have under your catalog, which is all different formats. You know what I mean? And distributors today, they don't want a one-off. Yeah, you got a hot single, you got a hot record, okay, cool, that's fine, that's dandy. Who's your structured label? Who's running your label? Who's my go-to guy? Because if you're an artist and trying to run the label, who's your go-to guy? Who's your administrative assistant? Who's the person I need to call if I shoot you a PO number that's going to shoot me the 30 to 60 pieces that's been reordered by independent you know, mom and pop store, one stop. Who is that guy? What is your structure of your label? And that's what you are giving out information with the Indie Tenant Amos Summit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I support well, this important. stuff. Yeah, like mm -hmm. I say, you know, there's the art of it, and some people make music for fun, and, yep. and we don't knock that. Yep. But once you try and sell a download, mm -hmm. sell a ticket to a mm -hmm. show, sell mm -hmm. a T-shirt, mm -hmm. sell a CD, mm -hmm. now in a way you're competing with every other artist. Absolutely, in absolutely. So then it comes down to who does it best. Absolutely. Who's giving the people what they want. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. I mean, you can press up 40 different albums, but if people mm -hmm. aren't wanting it or know about it or mm -hmm. you have a fan base, it'll mm -hmm. be a long, hard hill to overcome all your costs. Absolutely. So. That's what we really try and teach. And, you know, I is a real labor of love for us because we see the business changing, like, hourly. Yeah. So just today, there's been some kind of announcement, yeah. some kind of new company cropping yeah. up, somebody yeah. making a move right. that today is different than yesterday. Yeah. And tomorrow is going to be different than today. Absolutely. So if you're not, like, right on top of it, you know, like the Buck and Bronco, you know, you're just, you're on the sidelines watching it. Absolutely. And, you know, with IS, through our relationships in the industry, there's almost nobody that won't at least come out for an hour or two uh -huh. and give of their knowledge mm -hmm. back to the aspiring mm -hmm. artists in the creative mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. that is really trying to make it. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, it's overwhelming. Yeah. They, they, they thought they knew it yeah. four years ago. They yeah. know this guy was, yeah. worked for Epic yeah. 10 years ago, yeah. but man, that's nothing yeah. compared yeah. to today. Yeah. Just like we said, we, we saw the demise of all those other shows. 
the Gavins, the, mm-hmm. the Urban Networks, mm-hmm. the BREs, yeah, the, yeah. you know, all, all yeah. auto, Jack the Rapper, right. Impact, and right. all those. Right. And there's a new age. There's mm-hmm. a new movement. There's a new movement. And it's all independent. It's entrepreneurial. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's like tech companies. There's all these mm-hmm. new startups. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we know Dre, you know, over there, Beats is about to come out with yeah. that streaming thing. Yeah. They're going to go up against Spotify. And uh-huh. these guys are uh-huh. coming out. Uh-huh. So it's really exciting. But the bottom line is without great content, yeah. None of those streaming services have any customers. Exactly. And you know, it's like having a Ferrari with no gas. You know what well, one thing, you know, I'm glad you spoke on that. And see see when you you might have just said some things that went over some independent artists' heads or some major artists' heads. See, you just spoke on something. Spooter for Spitify or the the online streaming services. A lot of artists don't know how to solicit their records mm-hmm. to these type of companies. They don't know how much money they should get per stream. You know what I mean? They don't know how to get accountability. I was talking to an artist just yesterday after I left your show uh, the other day, and he was saying, well, I got my song on iTunes. I said, you have your album on iTunes, and I got a single on iTunes. So I, I figured iTunes has some kind of uh, um, independent, uh, uh, what is it, uh, affiliation program where you can go open up your account and get you a song on there. But I said, well, do you have, if you got one song on there, is it a ring back tone and a ring tone? Have you chopped it up for 30-second drops for that so you can get three Different separate monies for that. You know, ringtones and ringback tones cost more than digital downloads. You know what I mean? And they're licensed to your phone for only for one year. Then you have to renew it for another dollar seventy nine. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, they don't know that you get six to twenty four cents uh, per stream on all your radio stations. See, this is information that has to be passed down. Uh, there are some companies that will solicit your record and take you in and give you a digital distribution deal, but you're sitting there concerned about how many downloads you got, and you don't know they didn't chop you up for ringtones and ringback tones, solicit your music to uh, movie production facilities, because movie production studios right now like the independent music because it's so hard to get clearances on the major acts. Commercials, take your little beats and take your drops. You know, I had one guy um, that works with Battle Cat. His name is D Cat. He showed me a program that's out of this world where you can upload your music, pop it up in there, all kind of different record. I mean, uh, movie producers go there or the person that, uh, for commercials, hear your beat, take your beat. He made $80,000 in his music. His little 30 second part of his music made it to a little commercial where the uh, Indianapolis driver took a. Uh, Took the test drive and drove crazy, and he made eighty grand off that. Yeah, you know. So it's so many different avenues to make money in the business. It's just that every artist so concerned about a mixtape and getting a digital download, where they're going in that same circle. You know, it's not monkey see, monkey do. I don't knock that hustle. But if you sit back and say, hey, man, you know, I get a lot of artists say, man, I want to get managed. I want you to manage me. What are you looking for for management that you're not doing yourself? You bring me a CD that's already packed up and ready to go. I just seen you at a little hip-hop underground show. You booked yourself. You know what I mean? What is it you're looking for management? Right. You know what I mean? So. I mean, often they want somebody to do all the work and <laughs> get them to profit. Yeah, no babysitting going on here. But, you know, that that's it. It's, you bring the... You know, the aspects of marketing yeah. and, and traditional business mm-hmm. and, and all that into a, a new area of, uh, again, there's art, yeah. there's show business that with the live show, there's merchandising, and again, all, there's all that film and TV and commercials and games. And I mean, you see music now with greeting cards and toys. Absolutely. And they're all playing music. Absolutely. So it's more and more opportunities than ever to get paid, figure out what those revenues are. But again, one of the most important things I always think is do it for more than just the money. If you really love what you do, you're giving them great, great music, you're putting on great shows, let your people handle the money. Don't sit there and, you know, count the, the tickets, you Absolutely. know, the ticket buyers Absolutely. on the front row. Have fun. Absolutely. Give them, give them Absolutely. that show, you know. So, Absolutely. You know, we see that. And um, it's about having a diversified portfolio. Like you say, if you have a catalog coming in, yeah. you got downloads, you got T-shirts, you got mm-hmm. ringbacks, you mm-hmm. got... You know, licensed tracks over here. You're mm-hmm. on this movie soundtrack, yeah. this TV show. You got right. your BMI money coming See? in. And that's something I wanted to talk about is a lot of people are so bent out of shape trying to get on these 
old-fashioned terrestrial radio, yes, you know, yes, your, your big-time yes. commercial over-the-air stations, <laughs> they don't pay any royalties. No, they don't. But you're on the online station, like yeah. Indy 100, yeah. hey, guess what? Through yeah. sound exchange, you yeah. get your nickels and dimes. Absolutely. Adds up to dollars. Absolutely. <laughs> Imagine that. You know, these big billion-dollar stations don't want to pay anything. <laughs> and the little guys are basically forced to. And, and it should be a level playing field. Those big yeah. guys need to start yeah. paying a performance yeah. royalty. Because without the music, what what are they selling commercials to? Absolutely. You know? So I think it's really exciting these days. You can put your music out, get it up on iTunes, start getting paid out there on Internet and online radio with, you know, uh, Sound Exchange. But again, it's going to come down to exposure. Absolutely. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about how to market, how to advertise, how mm. to promote, how mm. to build that fan base. Mm -hmm. Because I, we know artists with a thousand true fans that are making a living or starting that ball rolling to being able to quit their day job absolutely and do music full time absolutely so we got some words from indie power coming up right now we're coming back our guest tonight is big a dpg records in the house is coming right up we got lots more coming up on the road to hollywood Be the one them call Tech Nine. What's up? It's your boy Mac One O. What up, y'all? This crazy bone from Bone Thugs. What's up? This is B Real from Cypress Hill. Hey, yo, this is Method Man. It's your boy Warren G. This is MC Light. Yo, 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 this is K Solo for Indie Power Man. If it's inside of you, man, it's inside of the power, man. DMX. And you better be checking out Indie Power, right? What up, though? Indie Power. One and only. IndiePower.com. If you got any music out there and you're really trying to get in the game, make sure you check out Indie Power. They're going to make it happen for you. So you see what this shirt says, right? It says Indie Power. Everybody that know anything about rap music and Tech 9 them, they know that Tech 9 got Indie Power. I'm the number one independent artist in the country. Totally independent and I love it. Everything's important about the indie world. It has been for a long time. You got more control and you make ten times as much money. Ten times more money. Because of the internet and because of the uh, greed of those old school executives at these record companies, the power is now in your hands, artists. Take back your art and don't sell yourself cheap or short to anyone. Once you're independent, then you become interdependent, meaning you rely on yourself and then others wind up relying on you and it's like the sun and the earth, everybody relying on each other, you know what I mean? Building it up, strong foundation. That's how Wu-Tang started, you do the same thing. Don't wait for nobody, do your thing, man. You know, life is short, you only live once. You gotta be a part of doing you first. And that means independence. What's important is the business aspect of it, you know, because, like, you, you, man, you can never forget it's called the music business. You know what I'm saying? 90% is business, 10% is the music. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you have to look at it like that, because if you don't, you'll be broke. Get up off your ass, don't sit there, wait around for the man to hand you this, hand you that. Anybody to hand you anything. This is indie power, baby. Do your thing. I don't have anybody telling me you shouldn't write that song, Tech. That's gonna offend some people. We do this. We do our merchandise. We put our artists out when we wanna. And that's why I chose to go the independent route because you have more control, more say so, more freedom to be an artist. You know, than, than dealing with a major. You know what I'm saying? I'm working with Indie Power right now. You know what I'm saying? Much love to them. You know what I'm saying? So y'all gonna start seeing a lot of the life entertainment, crazy bone in your face all over worldwide. So you know, y'all watch out for that because it's, it's going down. Indie Power representing the life entertainment. You know you got the power. The power is in you. Make your music do you. Don't let nobody tell you what you can or cannot do. Do you. Make your music. Enjoy what you do. Do it from the heart. Love what you do. Expand. Don't be afraid to create. Create. Be original. Make your music. Do not wait on no majors. Go with Indie Power. That's what I did. Keep your money, man. Your publishing, man. How you get paid, man. How you take care of your kids, man. How you put them through college, man. Write it, rap it, produce it, 
mix it, arrange it, wrap it, sell it. That gives you the power. If your business is not moving forward, then you're moving backwards. You know what I'm saying? You need to have your business right, have it tight, in the game, and then you'll know how your business will be running if you're dealing with Indie Power. Indie Power had you on the game, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to putting it out there and getting it out there and get that worldwide distribution, Indie Power is the way, Jack. Indie Power, baby. Gotta move it to where you wanna move. You have the right to do your music the way you want to do it. You've got the power. Indie Power. Yeah, yeah, Indie Power, man. Go ahead, man. Get it on yourself. Self-promotion is the best one. All right? It's about doing what you want to do, getting your music out there to the people and not somebody dictating what the hell you doing. They want you to sound like Jay-Z. They want you to sound like Fabulous. They want you to sound like Ludacris. They want you to sound like Eminem. They want you to be a replica. No, that ain't how music elevates. Indie power. It's hard to use your own money. Don't think it's easy because your money don't com can't compete with the majors. But if you believe in it, you will achieve it and keep pushing. Keep pushing. Indie Power is the best you can do, baby. Right, shout out to that Indie Power. You dig? We independent and standing strong in this biatch. Get with Indie Power. You got the power. Indie Power. Indie Power, man. You already know. Infamous. Indie Power, you already know what it is. Indie Power, man. Check it out. IndiePower.com. Put the power in your hands, you dig? That's how we do it, you feel me? Back with the road to Hollywood. Thank you so much. What a great night. It's it's all a celebration of independence, freedom, really doing for self. You know, it's, it's so exciting to see the artists after so many decades of hearing about bad record deals, mm -hmm. and shady managers, mm -hmm. or, you know, people that they didn't even know who owned their music. It Absolutely. Was, you know, yeah. all they, they, they just got up and sang and danced and, and hope they saw something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, now all of a sudden the creative people can really be rewarded. Absolutely. And this is music, movies, mm -hmm. reality shows, mm -hmm. online programming, mm -hmm. you know, so many great, great areas right now. Um, you know, with the advent of the internet, obviously it was a double-edged sword. Absolutely. You know, we could get, get it out there and the iTunes and that other world. But it made the music, you know, kind of liquid. Yes. It's a little easier to kind of grab. Yes, it did. If you didn't have a conscience, you yeah. might just, you know, yeah. Yeah. think you don't have to pay for this hard work. Mm -hmm. You know, how have you adjusted, you know, with the changes with the Internet where you've corralled it for the positive and basically, you know, taken advantages of the opportunities? I took advantage of the Internet way back when Napster was... Um, in the file sharing business and, and, and the record labels didn't understand file sharing. The U.S. government, comp, RIA didn't understand file sharing. They was considered about, they was uh, more concerned about independent retailers selling mixed CDs. So I made the adjustment back then. I was a, fortunate enough to be young enough in the music retail game to understand what an email was. Some of the older cats in retail didn't even have an email address. So when we would have lunches and brunches with the record label executives, they would ask some of the older retailers, look, can we have your email address? They didn't know what that was, let alone a website. I remember at one point, Abbey Road had uh, Alliance had a... Um, <laughs> had a um, uh, internet type of uh, uh, click and mortar stores. So if you sold, if you was a retailer, mom and pop retailer, and you bought X amount of dollars per year, they would build you a storefront. And they had an uh, affiliate program. Meaning, if you had a computer at your store, on the desk next to your catalog, and say if you came to uh, uh, VIP Records or My Record Shop in Compton, and you came in there, Jay, you said, man, I see you have a lot of hip hop here because you're an urban community, but I need that Elvis Presley record. I want Elvis Presley's greatest hits. Well, at that point, I was in tune to Elvis Presley, so I would turn the computer around, go to abbeyroad.com, because I have an account there, and open up that and search Elvis Presley's greatest hits, it would pop up. And because I was a sound scan store and I had a credit card uh, transaction machine, I would order that online, pay with it for a credit card, have it mailed directly to you. So I was already into, involved in the internet and the changes. And I knew that the Napster thing, and that was some of the questions that would come in the BREs and the urban networks is, you know, how is it that 
you know, uh, Best Buy or Target or Kmart or Tower Records have these records for $9.99. When I come to my record shop, or you come to my record shop and I have it for $15.99, well, there was a difference because um, a corporate uh, retail was getting the records on consignment based on co-op dollars and putting it in the front and having it on sale. Mm-hmm. So the record labels had to just give them a line of credit because of the volume they brought in. For a mom and pop store, you can only buy 30, 60, you know, 10, 15, 20 pieces. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you would go out and spend your, and we were cash and carry. Right. Abby Rose didn't take, uh, credit cards from the retailer mm-hmm. unless you had an open 30 day account with them then you can go in there and say hey give me 60 pieces of that new 50 cent record and blow it out based on you getting it on consignment blow it out for two dollars cheaper than the retail store next door because you have an open account so now instead of you spending your own hard cash you can give Abbey Road their little money back and keep three or four extra dollars so I made the transition, and by taking advice and listening to, um, see, corporate uh, record labels, the president of distribution companies would always have these meetings, mm-hmm. and they would pick our brains as independent retailers based on marketing concepts and ideas and based on what was happening in our communities and yeah. what moves we were making. Uh, like I said, there were coalitions and there were associations. I was part of an association. And the difference between a coalition, coalitions dictate what they're going to bring in. They have um, indie buying power. Uh, this coalition might say have 15 stores and say, hey, we want a thousand pieces. So they had to open with the one stop. So mm-hmm. Sam Jensberg and them would give that coalition and the president of the coalition that 1,000 pieces. In return, they bring it back in 30 days. Well, I started an association, meaning I'm not going to dictate your store. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to have three stores in each state of the union. And uh, there was 50, so I had 150 stores in my association. So that looks like buying power. So now I have uh, urban marketing dollars coming to my association. Put this poster in the window for 30 days and have this record on sale. No matter if you bought two, ten, a hundred. You know what I mean? So that's what I did. So I made the transition, but just complaining about the prices, I would talk to uh, presidents of distribution companies, the the Rick Blywesses and the, uh, Pete Joneses, and you know what I mean? And they would tell me off record that we had to take the music back and that the record labels were going from record label to consumer. They weren't going to even deal with One Stops no more. So that means you weren't going to deal with me because I'm a mom and pop store. I can't buy directly from you because I'm not bringing in a volume. That was the demise of retail. But they kind of stepped on their foot because they still wanted to sell millions of records. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't sell millions of records. Now, what happened was when Lil Wayne came in and sold 1.5 million records, through the corporate chain, through the Walmarts, the Kmarts, and the uh, Circuit Cities, when they were still bringing it in, Target. and Target, they said, hmm, consumers are still buying records. But can you imagine if the mom and pop stores are still open and all the other chains were still open, uh, the Tower Records, the FYAs, the Sam Goodies, it would have been 2.5 million records. So they were satisfied with that. Now the RA is talking about coming back down on the numbers so you can go platinum when you only sell a half a million records. You know what I mean? So things are changing. I made the adjustment. I knew that they were moving towards um, the digital technologies when they started using the cell phone uh, with Jamster, learning that technology to send music or anything audio to your phone without you using your computer. See, that what that test run was. It wasn't just um, ringtone. Mm-hmm. It was about how to get that music directly from this record label through a digital channel to get that download. And see, that's what that was. And that before, you remember your phone had an antenna. Well, we don't want that antenna. You know what I mean? Or before, if you had to get a download, you had to connect your phone or whatever device you had to your computer, do your dial-up through AOL or Netscape, and then download it. You know what I mean? So, you know, i seen the changes, and by me being a young independent executive and by Mr. Uh, Pete Jones telling me take the music back I went back to my friends who were artists and entertainers who was losing these record deals and saying hey it ain't stopped press up your record I don't want to press up my record here's a distributor here's a manufacturer yeah. you know what I mean so that's how I made my transition I mean the consumers are everything I mean that's who we all work for I mean if the fans want it 
it's, we're just cutting off these layers of all these people in the middle that we had to wine and dine. Absolutely, and all absolutely. That, you know, so hopefully as, you know, of course the digital business is thriving, but there's a big vinyl business out big there. Big vinyl. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't want to give up their CDs and DVDs yet. Mm -hmm. There's different things for mm -hmm. different people. Mm -hmm. You know, our mm -hmm. motto is always give to people what they want, how they want it. Absolutely. You can't force everybody in a new format. Absolutely. Hey, they're, they're fine. There's, Absolutely. There's a zillion CDs and DVDs out there. So it'll naturally always evolve. We've seen so many formats. But, it, again, it comes down to the music. We're going to go to another interview we did backstage. This is Bone Thugs and Harmony. This is Crush Groove. We're going to be coming back, and we'll be talking about IES, the Indie Entertainment Summit. Absolutely. The big IES Hip Hop Honors coming up. It's going to be a legendary event. You're either going to be about it, or you're going to read about it and just be one of the masses. So coming right back on the road to Hollywood. More with Big A, DPG in the house. You can only top it with Bone Thugs, man. How's that feel? Oh, man, it feels absolutely wonderful to be here, to be a part of it. You know, 20 years in the game now, 2013, being a part of something that I used to watch as a kid, the movie Crush Groove and things like that. You know, being a part of the legendary K-Day and things like that. It's just it's wonderful, man. I mean, can't ask first for a better life. First, about the first time you came out to L.A., man, you saw the palm trees, you turned on the radio, and hip-hop was on there. And, you know, what was that like, man, to come out here from from Cleveland and feel that Cali vibe for the first time? Oh, uh, man, I mean, definitely coming out here very first time, it was surreal. You know what I'm saying? It was like... Like I finally land. I finally understood what coming around the mountain when she come mean, you know what I mean? Riding on the Greyhound, coming out here just for the first time, seeing mountains and just how beautiful California really is, man. It's, I've been here for 20 years and I ain't leaving. <laughs> That's it, man. I go back to Cleveland. You travel anywhere, but this is the promised land right here. You know what I'm saying? That's beautiful. Now, now, what keeps you motivated, man, to keep that new music coming? What's the motivation to continue to build that legacy? I mean, the motivation comes from the love of music, man, from the love of being able to express myself, you know, liberate myself without going through the drastic extremes, telling it in the story, and, you know, just being able to write down my thoughts and get things off my chest. So it's just being able to make real music from the heart. I love music, every kind of music. And having seen so many changes going to business, everything you've been through, what advice would you give to that young artist coming up today that's got talent but needs a little direction on how to build their own legacy? I mean, you know, it takes a lot of determination. You got to have what it takes to really get out there and grind. Basically, you know, you, you just got to, man, you got to stick to it. You got to love what you do. You know, you got to know your business, understand it's the show part, which is fun, a lot of partying and all that. But you also got to be wise enough to know the business part, which you should learn before you learn the show. You know what I'm saying? So if you know, understand the decipher between the two, the show and the business, then nine times out of ten you can make it through this industry. Played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Uh, DJ Big B, motherfucker! Right, right. Back to the road to Hollywood. That is brand new from the corrupt mixtape. We have Big A in the house, DPG right there. You see corrupt. Daz, they're putting out great product. Of course, you got the brand new Daz and Dub C album out. Yeah. That's, that is really a hot album. Yeah. Of course, you know, again, it's legends coming together Absolutely. to give a hybrid you okay, know, of their talents. And bot bottom line is, we're talking about IES, the Indie Entertainment Summit. It's coming right up August 7th through the 11th. It only happens once a year. We got people coming in from 20 countries, yeah. all 50 states. It's all about the sharing of knowledge. Yep. It's about the exchange of information, sparking new collaboration. Absolutely. That's how these relationships get started. You and I meet somewhere, we start talking. If yeah. we like the vibe we're giving off, uh -huh. next thing you know, there's some business being handled. Oh, yeah. We figure out who can do what. And before you know it, your network is, is strong. Yeah. You know who to go to for what. And that's really what IES is all about. So it's five days. You can go to the website. It's IES Fest. 
That's F-E-S-T dot com. you got to get registered. We're going to have a little promo uh, at the end of the show, but uh, call the office, get involved. Like I say, you don't want to be one of the masses just hearing about it after the IS hip hop right. honors. You say, are you right. kidding me? Yeah. Who got on stage? Yeah. Who, who yeah. reunited? Yeah. Who, who's in that picture? Yeah. Well, understand that we honor trailblazers every year. Last year, of course, we inducted Tech 9. We did Spice One, had the alcoholics. Had Chino XL and so many people with with Violet Brown, everybody. But this year, it's it's stepping up. It's stepping up. We are now starting that celebration of 30 years when Andre Young met O'Shea Jackson, mm. and when Dr. Dre and Ice Cube got together. We know what's straight out of Compton. You mix in a little Easy E and Ren. You get DJ Yella in there working it, and that album is what we're celebrating. We're inducting NWA in the IS, oh, you big. know, Hip Hop Honors. Mm -hmm. We are celebrating straight out of Compton. We got the guys that ran the studio and mixed it, and Big Bass Brian who mastered wow. it. The guy that shot the album cover and the videos, and people that cleared the samples and ran the labels, and you know, the people that formed Priority Records and formed you know Ruthless Records. And you know, you could almost trace so many successes, yeah. hundreds Absolutely. of successful records off that family tree. Yeah. Forget about the Dr. Dre's and. Ice Cubes and Snoop Dogs and the Master P's and the yeah, Mac 10s right. and the, you know, the yeah. M&M's and the 50 yeah, Cent's right. and now the Kendrick Lamar's. It, mm -hmm. it all is part of that family tree. So in addition to inducting NWA, the IS Hip Hop Honors this year are going to be paying very, very special tribute to the late great Easy e mm -hmm. Tupac, mm -hmm. and Nate Dogg. Yeah. And, you know, rest in peace to the, the, the legacy. Mm -hmm. As we all know, we're never going to let that music die. No. You know, if, if no. one spirit stops, the music lives on, and we never want to see um, any anybody, um, you know, not get the due respect. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're inducting Bone Thugs in Harmony. You know, we're gonna have DJ Quick, mm -hmm. Cypress Hill. Mm -hmm. I mean, they open up so many doors. That alternative mm -hmm. hip hop, that mm -hmm. Latin crossover, uh, and we're gonna give the special Trailblazer Award to Chuck D mm -hmm. from Public Enemy. Wow, that's because major. Because he just got in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Chuck has always bucked the system, done things his way. Yeah. He fought the power and he won. Mm -hmm. And he was one of the first guys to embrace the internet. Absolutely. He said, hey, these record companies, yeah. man, they're, they're jerking yeah. us around yeah. and telling me what to do. Yeah. I I want to go to work for you, the fans. <laughs> Let me give you this music. Some's free, some you got to pay. Yeah. You got to support. You got to yeah. put some gas to keep this engine yeah. running. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, when we pay respect to, uh, you know, uh, legends, moguls, icons, whatever you want to call them, it's really about moving forward yeah. and having them in the rearview mirror. Yeah. So you have a lot of confidence that look, when EZ started this thing, there was no blueprint. No, I mean, it Jerry, wasn't. Jerry Heller helped him make a few moves, and then Mark Cerami and Brian Turner over priority, they did their thing. Yeah. But, you know, they, they created something from nothing. Yes, they did. And that was great. If, if, yes, if they did. People haven't seen that, you know, Ice T documentary that, that came out this year. Art of Rap, something from nothing. That's really what's Absolutely. about. Absolutely. You gotta be a risk taker. You got to be able to go out there and with no net mm -hmm. fly across that that, that canyon or mm -hmm. or link these two mountains up with a bridge that mm -hmm. there was never one before. Mm -hmm. Those are the pioneers. And of course, Dr. Dre, Ice Cube, MC Ren, DJ Yella, mm -hmm. you know, everybody that was around that 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 legacy is what, what it's all about. Yeah, but right. what, what is the most important thing for you to, you know, impart on people to be at a live event like that where you can really press the flesh make the connections, learn, not just in a book or on the internet, but yeah. actually feel in the spirit of the room, yeah. the passion and yeah. the dedication these people took to actually make the near impossible happen. You know, I, I'm telling everybody about IS, and uh, I'm telling them to bring their pencil and paper and their notepad. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we took advantage of all the other conferences uh, that were coming along us 10 years ago, where we knew we, if we missed the BR, we, we'd get the Gavin or the Urban Network, and you would come there and to voice your opinion. Well, y'all not doing this. Well, how do you do this? And you're not doing this. And then you have the technology companies coming there to advertise their services. Right now, uh, with the lacking and the missing of that information, I really think that uh, this summit that you're putting together to induct these people and give out some information, I think everybody need to come there and really tuck, tuck, come in and tuck down and 
get the information and write it down and get your business cards together, um, pass them out, network with the new technology companies, meet you, what you can bring to the table. You have a lot of other services that you do, and you can help independent artists. Um, they just have to have the insight. Remember, I was telling you about uh, why I don't um, uh, uh, sign artists right now. In my, I'm able to do that, but why I don't? Because I want my artists or the artists that I do it to be more educated in the administration side of the business. Yeah. Um, um, I, I go through that with some of the artists um, that we deal with now. Uh, somebody come to Daz and say, hey, Daz, put my record out, and this is a well-known artist. Daz will have to pay for the artwork to get printed up, pay the graphic designer to design it, pay for the, the uh, pressing up the record. That means he spends five to $10,000 of his own money mm -hmm. to put out five or 10,000, six to 10,000 damn records. And if the records don't sell, then he's stuck with an invoice. Plus, they don't know about the co-op dollars that you have to spend, that the distributor's going to spend uh, to get your record to a Best Buy. You know what I mean? They might want to bring in a thousand pieces, but they want a five to ten percent discount, and then they want to say, "Hey, we're going to run you for nine ninety nine for the first thirty days and put you up front." But it's going to cost you that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's deductions coming from the five to six or seven lots you're getting from your distributor. They don't understand. So at the end of the day, you might get if you sell ten thousand pieces that you pressed up, we're good. Yeah. I explained to Daz, I remember seeing a house for $300,000 in uh, Mission Viejo. I said, well, Daz, $300,000 is 30,000 pieces. We can get 30,000 pieces pressed up for 15900 And if we give them 50% down and, and ask the manufacturer to give us 30 to 60 days, by the time you get your PO and get paid, we bought a house for less than $10,000. Mm -hmm. But we got to sell through. <laughs> you know course, what I mean? Of course. <laughs> you know, there's a cost of doing business. You know, so many young artists think it's about making money, making money. Yeah. There, there's a cost. Yeah, it's you know? a cost. You, your revenues have to exceed <laughs> your costs before you even think about a profit. You know? But that that's what's great, like I say, is um, it's the camaraderie. It's the being around other entrepreneurs. Yeah. That are doing it their way. You're learning mm -hmm. from the, the, how did Macklemore just had back-to-back -back number one hits with no Record Nothing. deal. He's yeah. number one on a right. pop chart. Yeah. How did Tech Nine almost do yeah. twenty million dollars? Yeah. You don't hear him on the radio. Right. How did Mac Miller have a number one album with barely any airplay? You Absolutely. Know? It's really the success stories that we celebrate. There's so much going on. Yes. Um, like I say, I can't even tell people all the reasons to go because there's so much. Yes. You know, like you yes. said, if you got your pen, your pad, you're like a sponge, your ears yeah. are open. Yes. You got your business card, <laughs> right. you're ready to make a professional presentation. <laughs> Sky's the limit. Somebody Sky. in that room is going to make millions Absolutely. of dollars off of those Absolutely. ideas. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and that's really what we're celebrating. You know, as always, um, it's about the dedication to your craft. It's about being a student of the game. And it's about learning from those that are already doing what you want to do. Absolutely. You know, from their level. Why always make the mistakes on your own dime yeah. when, you know, a lot of people are afraid to fail. Yeah. And we all know, we've all failed on projects. Absolutely. And Donald Trump's gone bankrupt three or four times. Yes, he did. I mean, the bottom line is, unless you, you're you out there flying and ready to take those risks, there is no way you're going to position yourself mm -hmm. to, to be able to hit that home run. Mm -hmm. You know, Absolutely. You're, you're, you, you know, you're careful with your with your swing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you strike out. Sometimes you hit the home run. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is, uh, as an independent, it's about bettering your game. So Absolutely. you get better at, at, at batting, better at pitching. Whatever it is that you do best, surround yourself with other people that do what you don't do mm -hmm. best. Mm -hmm. So now, all of a sudden, as a team, you're well balanced. Mm -hmm. This guy's good for this. This guy's good with social media. This guy's good with equipment and technology. Mm -hmm. This guy's good to do the radio interviews. Mm -hmm. He's down mm -hmm. there. He's a spokesperson. Mm -hmm. You know, have people like that on your team so now you're well-rounded. Mm -hmm. If all five of you or ten of you do the exact same thing, yep. it's kind of redundant. You Absolutely. Know? You're not really utilizing the, the power of, mm -hmm. of numbers that you have. Mm -hmm. But it's so exciting, you know, what's going down. Uh, you know, with IES, it's been a labor of love, like I say, to put this together because no one else is doing it. No you know? one. And no, no disrespect to the ASCAP Expos or the New Music Seminars right. or the South by Southwest. But if you've been down to Austin lately, it's a giant street party. <laughs> if you're going down there thinking you're going to get discovered or, or hook up some business deals or, 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 or grow some brain cells, yeah, you're, you're probably right. in the wrong place. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're going to come back with a hangover, yeah. forget something, lose something. <laughs> and, and, and the person you met... Um, 
might not even return your call. Absolutely. You know? So it's it's great to have a party. We love that. But for those that are really trying to get out there Absolutely. and better their chances for success, Absolutely. you need to go to an event like IES mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. plug in. Mm-hmm. You know, Learn the different topics. Start applying those and, and network. Mm-hmm. Because as we know, Sales makes the world go round. Absolutely. You know, so you, you can you can take a creative approach to sales. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be, you know, when I grew up, I was a creative person. I thought sales was like jamming something down somebody's throat, yeah. selling right. something they don't want. Right. You know, yeah. but yeah. You re- when you realize it, everything, I, this yeah. water and yeah. that watch yeah. and this yeah. phone, everything we were sold yeah. because somebody sold us or right. we liked their ad yeah. or their pitch. Yeah. And then it becomes creative. Yeah. You know, just like you're creating music, you create music videos. Yes, yes. Create advertisements, yes. commercials, you know, ads in, in the magazines. So there's a still physical world. You know, the double XLs and sources are still out there. There are still stores that, that have specialty yes, you know, they do. vinyl yes, they do. and CDs yeah. and all that. There's mm-hmm. the swap meets. Mm-hmm. So it's really a finding that balance of, you know, where you fit in, you know, who you want to align with, whether yeah. it be the distributors yeah. and promotional yeah. companies yeah. and, yeah. you know, companies that are, are showing you new avenues to get your show on the road. Or get your merchandise sold, you know, mm-hmm. on demand, mm-hmm. things like that. You don't mm-hmm. necessarily have to press up a whole garage full of T-shirts. No, you don't. You know, it's different. No, than you don't. You're not going to make as much per unit. Yeah. But then again, you don't have that inventory. Yeah. No, you don't. You know, I tell artists right now, I give independent artists a goal. I said, look, build your fan base up. I hear artists all the time. Oh, I I push twenty thousand units out the trunk. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, it sounds good. Okay, let's start over again. Let's press up 1,000 pieces of a CD for less than $1,000. Now, I want you to go out there, hand it from the pomenades to the swap meets to the corners, and get out there and get your branding on your hustle on and sell one CD between 7 to $10. And at the end of the day, I don't care if it takes you 90 days, at the end of the day, you should have roughly seven to ten thousand dollars on one thousand pieces. Now, if you can't sell those one thousand pieces, put that particular CD up and do another one and go at it again. Take the profits from the first one and flip it again, you know, and build up a fan base. You know, build your fan base up. Do go get some T-shirts from downtown and put your logo on that T-shirt and say, "Hey, buy my T-shirt for eight dollars and I'm gonna give you my free CD." Mm-hmm. So you can enjoy my music, yeah. you know, get your marketing, and get your branding up at the same time. Um, you know, I, I, I tell everybody right now, I don't press up mix CDs. I don't I don't do see I don't do CDs like this. I don't. This is giveaways. This is what this is. I would never give this to a record label executive. I would never give this to a future business associate of mine. I'm going to go to him with a CD-ready, retail-ready, with a bark on, professional CD as possible, because I want this man to think, if he's going to invest in me, I'm going to make his job easier. Yeah. All he needs to do is do what he needs to do. You, you look just like Warner Brothers, Universal, Sony, or Absolutely. any of them. Absolutely. Just so Absolutely. happy the music's independent Absolutely. and the structure's independent. Absolutely. Well, I know we could talk forever. You're going to come to <laughs> IES. You're going to hear more from Big A. Yeah. This is going to be future shows. We thank you so much for tuning in The Road to Hollywood. We've got some words here about IES. We're going to see you at the event. Write down that phone number, man. Get on the website, and we want to see you there. Again, be about it. Don't read about it after the fact. This is The Road to Hollywood. We'll see you next time. This is Corey from Slipknot. This is Matt Sorum from Velvet Revolver. What's up? It's your boy, Mac 10 Hey, this is Mike and this is Nelson James. What's up? This is Be Real from Cypress Hill. What's up? I'm Sean from Yellow Card. This is your boy, Warren G. I'm Brooks Wackerman from Bad Religion. Hey, yo, this is Method Man. This is Mick Jones from Florida. And I got a question for you. Are you serious about moving your creative career forward? Then you need to be at IES. If you're a musician out there, you got a band, you want to rock, don't sit down on your ass and wait for someone to knock on your door. You can do it yourself. Don't wait for nobody. Do your thing, man. You know, life is short. You only live once. Totally independent and I love it. Everything's important about the indie world. It has been for a long time. You got more control and you make 10 times as much money. 10 times more money.
Don't wait for the record label, do it yourself. People need to hear the music that's in your head, that's in your fingers, that's in your heart. So get out there and let's hear it. Because of the internet and because of the uh, greed of those old school executives at these record companies, the power is now in your hands, artists. Take back your art and don't sell yourself cheap or short to anyone. If you believe in your music, if you believe in your gift, if you believe what God has given you, make sure you go to IES, show the world what you got. It's gonna be going down here in Los Angeles, and it's it's something that gets all you independent artists getting going on that drive, doing what you guys got to do, man. Be independent. Don't be afraid to be independent. You gotta be a part of doing you first, and that means independence. I implore you to go to the IES, the Independent Entertainment Summit, and do your thing. If you think you know what you're doing in this music business, I don't care who you are, there are things you will learn. The indie way is the way, you know? The large corporations have basically disintegrated. They're looking to the indie community to create the music and create the genesis of what's going to be the next environment. If you started a new band and you're having a little bit of trouble figuring out where to go next or what you should be doing, who you should be talking to, whether you need a record label or how to get your music distributed, you need to go to the Indie Entertainment Summit. That's the place where you go to meet industry panel experts and they're going to tell you everything you need to know to get you where you want to be. For me, I spend all of my days and months going around the world educating musicians on how they can better actually release their music and market their music. It's part of my mission, it's part of the way that we can grow the music business. So I'm going to go at all the important summits that I can go to and the Indie Entertainment Summit is going to be one of the places that I'll be. You want to be educated? You want me to help educated? You better be there. If you rap, sing, dance, model, DJ, or act, or like myself do comedy, you can't afford to miss this conference. If you're trying to do your thing in this business, you're tired of waiting on somebody to help you, and all this coming that late, the Indian Entertainment Summit. You know what time it is, man. It's that time, Rolex time. Chase some cash, get money, get care. Shout out to Hit Boy G Rock, Money Making Mess, Stacy B, and Sir Cup. And we here with the Indie Entertainment Summit, man. Y'all need to be here, man. It's in LA in August, man. Beautiful people here, man. Dropping knowledge, dropping gems about this new way to pursue this music and a new way to get this money, man. It's the Indie Entertainment Summit. That's the IES, baby. Very important place to be if you want information to take things to the next level. You may not have access to the internet. It's okay, too. Go there. You have an opportunity, IES. Write it, rap it, produce it, mix it, arrange it, wrap it, sell it. That gives you the power. Every second that you're sitting on your butt waiting for something good to happen, your competition is passing you by. So uh, if you got a dream, go and fight for it and support Indie Entertainment Summit. I need y'all to come out to my city and represent with the Entertainment Indie Summit. It's going down August 1st through the 5th. If you're an independent artist, you're an independent label, you want to get your music out there, you want to network, come out to Los Angeles. Go to IES conference in LA, Google it, you gotta be there. Showcases, panels, opportunities, everything that Indie Entertainment Summit does is something that is very much for today's music industry. We know how it used to be, but we don't know how it's going to be tomorrow. But I think the Indie Entertainment Summit is going to be an opportunity for motivated, ambitious professionals to meet each other. Music business is a hard thing to break into. So you gotta do what you can, check out IES, Indie Entertainment Summit. If you're gonna be anywhere, you need to be at IES, man, in LA, man. That's where it's gonna be at. It's going down just like that, August 1st through the 5th. IES, man. If you ain't going to IES, you ain't gonna live to be an artist. You know why? IES, feed your mind, feed your soul. Get a good lawyer, they'll teach you which way to go. If you're serious about your music, where do they need to be? You gotta be at IES, yo. What's that? In the entertainment summit. You should check it out at IES.com. Uh, hopefully this will become an annual event that we'll all be going to many years from now. We need to be out to IES. That's IES, baby. Going down. August 1st through the 5th. You have to check out IES. IES, show the world what you got. Ain't no excuses. It's now or never. It's your chance to show the world what you've got. IES. I hope I see you there. Indie Entertainment Summit, man. Circle, we gonna be there. 
Indie motherfucking entertainment summer. Be there, Jack. IES. Look for it online. The Indie Entertainment Summit. If you really think you got what it takes to stand out, you really want to make sure you stand out, you can show the world what you got at the IES, the Indie Entertainment Summit. IES, it's going to be here in Los Angeles. Entertainment capital of the world. <laughs> if you ain't there, you're nowhere.